I'm going to start by reading a few poems out of In Praise of Falling. Um, I wrote several of these poems back when I was a San Francisco resident, so I'll, I'll pick a few of those. Um, stick with the San Francisco theme. I went suburban about 10 years ago, so I live in Walnut Creek now. This one's called Bernal Hopes. Knit cap rolled down to eyebrows, corduroy slouched below hip bones. The boy leaned into Good Life Grocery's door, yelled to the butcher, yo, cops took us fishing, look at here. His fingers threaded the salmon's gills, an arc of silver lifted in the air. Sell it to you, 20 bucks. The butcher shook a grin onto his face said, way to go, jackpot, a name that stuck for life. And they laughed like water, like last night's take of nickels falling in the slot machine's mouth. And jackpot nudged out the doorway, strutting up the street, his image flashing in storefront windows, that fish swinging from his hand like a comet fallen to earth, a song of luck, of winning. This poem started with a conversation that I had at a coffee shop that's no longer at 17th and Sanchez called Cup of Joe. Theories. The queen working the espresso maker tells me Karen Carpenter was actually Richard in drag. What they found crumpled in the corner of the closet was not her skeletal body, but his threadbare blouses wool skirts fallen from hangers, a persona disintegrating. I tell him Marilyn lives on Graceland's second floor. I stood at the red velvet ropes myself. I heard her humming. I pull up a stool. He polishes chrome to gleaming. We trade fictions. Love outlasts death. The universe never gives you more than you can take. Those who have gone live on in me. I drain my glass. He slings a damp rag over his shoulder, pours a refill on the house. When God closes a door, he opens a window on the 26th floor. This is the, the last poem I'm gonna read from the book. It's set at Ocean Beach. I used to live in the Sunset District, and I walked Ocean Beach a lot in a um, rather tumultuous year following a breakup. This poem came from that setting. Narrative. October surf washes up details from stories I've quit trying to plot. A whole walnut shell bleached white, its ridges filed smooth. The half-dissolved lozenge of a brick a goat carcass decomposing on a nest of sea grapes. What happened to you along the way is the question you ask a changed friend or a truck's rear view mirror cocked toward your face. How red sea glass tumbled into the shape of New Jersey. How the dime sized sand dollar, thin as Eucharist, rode the summer tumult to the beach. I have no answers for now. My ex visits in the form of a charcoal-colored gull landing on a driftwood plank. Autumn red beak. She lifts two wings. Nothing is what it seems. The crab's lost leg is a sprig of ice plant rusted orange. The bleached clamshell is a plastic milk bottle cap. What made me believe I could predict my life? Decipher this code. A stone the size of my hand, its granite surface etched by crooked white lines, is not a map. A flock of piper's one-inch beaks stitch crooked paths into wet sand. I'm done searching for patterns. Today, this trail ends at my planted feet. So the book is for sale out at the book table, and also you'll find out there um, in praise of falling temporary tattoos, in case you want to dress up as the cover of my book for Halloween. <laughs> um, I'm going to read one more poem. It's a new one, and it's about a different city that I fell in love with recently, where you can have 
the urban living experience, a thriving underground literary arts community, and a house for $60,000. I promised them that I wouldn't tell anybody about that. <laughs> Everybody who I met there said, shh, don't tell anybody. So I won't tell you that it's Pittsburgh, and not the one that's about 40 miles from here, but the other one. The Acrobats of Pittsburgh. A medevac helicopter descends diagonally across the screen of my hotel window, all blue metal and yellow warning lights, scaring off the hospital roof an explosion of pigeons who scatter like shrapnel, then regroup in the sky as one body flying. Last week, my father fell down a flight of stairs. Hear the compression of rib cage against risers, the forced exhalation of breath, skull hitting stone, knocking a blood stain onto a CT scan and landing my dad on an airlift to the neurology wing. Last night, I boarded an airplane that flew me 3,000 miles away from my kids. First time. Eastbound jets accelerate nightfall, snow caps blushing amber then dark, and no, that death symbol wasn't lost on me. Those pigeons kamikaze diving in the cold blue over Pittsburgh are the same color as their shadows gliding across the city's brick and glass facade, except for the talc white one in the center on whom all things seem to turn. Your father is fine now, my mother said, when she called to tell me the news. But he had a little accident last week. Though I live an hour from that hospital, though I could have been there to hold his hand or hers, she calls me a week too late, which begs the question, what else don't I know? That chopper has disappeared behind a skyscraper, touched down on the landing pad and cut power. Those pigeons return to the roof edge, perch like gargoyles, and wait. My kids still believe that dying happens to old people, even after the eldest read Abraham Lincoln's birth and death dates, then did the math. He concluded this president must not have taken very good care of himself. I blinked twice. I said nothing. A glassed-in footbridge stretches over the road below my hotel window. Across it, an orderly pushes an empty gurney. An age-bent patient pushes her IV pole. A man in a wheelchair rolls halfway across it, then pauses, looks down at commuter traffic clogging the street. On the speakerphone, I tell the kids, the pigeons here sail through the sky like acrobats. The youngest says, I can do that, and takes off to perform tricks I can't see. The older one says, there are 2,000 words in my Spanish dictionary, and I like the index best. Those words burst forward in flocks. I ask him to look up airplane, telephone, bird. Why does anyone ever leave anyone they love? Imagine feeling your way down an unlit hallway, fumbling the textured walls for the switch, barefoot stepping on cool hardwood plank, then barefoot stepping on air. Dad and I don't talk about the accident, except when I say, I'm buying you a coal miner's lighted helmet and a GPS for your next trip through the dark. And then he laughs, and then we are silent. My son texts me the words, avion, telefono, parado. Sometimes you have to let people fall. A bird trainer once told me no one knows for sure how homing pigeons find their way back. Could be something about the metal granules in their ears interacting with the Earth's magnetic force. On the street below, an ambulance siren fires off like a starting gun, and those birds they're at it again. Trapeze artists launching off platforms, swinging arcs only nature could design. Thank you. <laughs>